The opinions expressed on this program are solely those of individual participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of either Spectrum Generations or Time Warner Cable. Mature Lifestyle is made possible by Knowlton Hewins Roberts Funeral Homes and Cremation Service. Our homes are warm and welcoming, and we take care of you and your family like we would our own. Call us anytime. We are here for you. Hello, welcome to Mature Lifestyle. Spectrum Generations is so pleased and honored to bring you programs that make a real difference in your life. Today is no exception. We're going to talk about good nutrition is your best defense. Now that might sound simple, and I think it is, with the help of experts like these. We're so pleased to have Andrea McDonald and Chris Teague, who both have special places in the, at the table here. I like being at a table when we're talking about <laughs> nutrition. So first, I'd like to know a little bit about each of you. So Andrea, uh, you're in nutrition. Uh, tell me what you do for a living and how you got interested in nutrition. All right. Um, well. Um, so I'm a registered dietitian um, with Hannaford at both the Augusta store locations as well as Gorham. So I commute around a little bit. Okay. Um, and I started with them in July of this of 2013. So I'm, you know, still fairly new to the to the dietitian game. Um, but I um, did my undergrad in Canada and also my internship. Okay. That's part of becoming a dietitian. You do a four-year program and right. then an internship well, as well. There's a lot to learn, isn't there, really? Oh, there's a lot to learn. Because yeah. you, you know about health, you know what foods contribute to making things better, et cetera. And also a, ver a variety of different areas you can work in as a dietitian. So that's okay. kind of one of the... And so you ended up, better. and probably the source for most of us in getting our nutrition in line is a grocery store. Yeah. And uh, yeah. tell me, uh, do most grocery stores have nutritionists working for them or it's, is it's, this something new or it's really becoming more common okay. um i did i've gone to you know a few conferences since yes. i've started with Han hanford and they've been um conferences with, with other others. grocery store exactly. dietitians from across the so states. that's sort of a coming field as yeah. people are don't you think people are getting a little more interested in knowing more about what they're eating and what it's going to do for them yeah I so you're on the cutting that. edge of this new movement <laughs> new old movement <laughs> well it's kind of a new area of nutrition you know getting customers at the point of purchase exactly getting to think about what they're putting in their carts what they're exactly what they're going to bring home to their families well i'm going to come back to you for more of that because we all want to know what to buy at the grocery <laughs> store so we can eat better and chris you fix the stuff <laughs> you make wonderful meals tell me a little bit about what you do i'm the nutrition director at spectrum generations um, i oversee all the meals on wheels and the community dining for our our uh, services. And I so. must say that has to be a challenge because you've got to get nutritious, good, and nice looking meals ready to be delivered <laughs> by volunteers it always to people is. in their homes. <laughs> you have to make it, look, make it look good, make it taste good. And it's then, important, uh, isn't it? It absolutely is. And uh, I have a background in food prep. I grew up uh, working in kitchens and went to culinary school and, and hotel restaurant management is my educational background and I've been in Maine for just about three or four years now and well, we're glad you're here I hope you're happy <laughs> and I uh, came came to Spectrum just over a year ago and uh, yes. the role has really grown since then especially with the, the way things in the government have changed but uh, we continue to, to experience increased demand, and, and it's really great to be able to serve all the people that we do. And there, you also prepare large meals for people who come to centers, is that correct? We do. We have uh, three community dining sites uh, all over our, our counties, and people come to us, and we prepare food right there on, on site every day. Um, in one of the sites, it's one day a week, but the other two, it's five days a week. Right. Uh, we serve quite a few people, I think just over 70,000 last year. Oh just my in those. goodness, and just keeping up with the variety. Mm -hmm. And what, what advice do you have for uh, seniors as we're trying to uh, understand our metabolism may <laughs> slow a little bit, maybe if you're particularly active, not so much, but what do you think about in terms of good balanced nutrition for seniors? Well, she might have a, a better pointer on the, the actual nutrition, but in terms of but that's appeal, what you prepare, so I'm confident that you sure. know. <laughs> in terms of appeal and interest, um, the color of their food, the okay, it's important. The, the textures, the varied textures. We we use a lot of uh, Maine farm fresh food oh, and, and produce and wonderful. meats and cheeses and things. So 
all of our menus are, we rotate, so we're never serving the same thing uh, on a Monday in March as we did in April, or the same, you know, back and forth. Right. It really keeps it interesting, so people want to come back and eat the food, or want to take the food home exactly. or get it delivered. That's right, and no matter how nutritious it is, if nobody eats it, it doesn't help anything, Absolutely. does it? Well, let's come right back to you. Okay. Uh, Chris mentioned the emphasis on fresh and local mm -hmm. when possible, and we see that more and more in grocery stores as people yeah. are getting it. Uh, not so much processed, but fresh and local. Uh, right. Can you talk about that a little bit? Well, Hannaford does have um, a fairly recent program called the Close to Home Program, mm -hmm. um, where they, you know, they label things in the store that are grown close to home. Right. So, you know, generally things that are just grown in Maine. Um, so it's, you know, it's a very important thing, I think, especially with the kind of changing climate and our food, I don't know, food culture. Right. Um, people really like to know where their food is coming from, I think. And how can people best, when they go to the grocery store, know or teach themselves or learn about how to buy the best kinds of foods for nutritional values for their families and for themselves? Well, I know um, at Hanford they do have the Guiding Stars program. It's been around for a number of years. So that's kind of a way to gauge how healthy a food is. Mm -hmm. um, so we say one star is good, two is better, three is best, and it's okay. based on... Give me an example of a one and a two and a three. What kind of product? <laughs> Can um, you think of one? Well, one may be like a, like a whole grain cracker. Okay. Um, so that would be beneficial because it has the whole grains, but it also might have, you know, a, you know, a little okay. bit of extra fat or, or salt. Okay. It's, you know, it's a cracker. Um, and then a, a three-star food would be you know, whole whole grain, whole wheat bread, or any fruits and any any fruits fruit and, and vegetables, vegetables. Basically, you know, they're going to get three stars because you cannot go wrong with fruits okay. and vegetables. One of the things they say in a supermarket that you should stay on the outside aisles, mm -hmm. <laughs> that you get the fresh fruits, you get your fresh meats and your dairy, and then you come back and check out. If you go into the middle, you get more of the sweets and the cookies and the cakes and the processed foods. Is right. that true? I think that's true. I'm not in saying general. you don't really, but I mean it's just a very <laughs> broad direction. Yeah, I think as kind of a rule of thumb, there are more processed foods in the center aisles, and it is good to shop the periphery of the store. Um, but with you know, food companies are getting on board with this whole nutrition thing too. So you see, you know, big name brands that are lowering the salt in their right. in their products, um, especially you know canned fruits and vegetables. They're doing. Uh, there's a lot of you know no salt added products out there now and. Um, so I think there's there's definitely yeah. some benefit to going through the center aisles, especially you know if you're on a budget too. I, mean, I, I was going to say to it's more expensive on the outer aisles, isn't it? Sometimes, yes, and sometimes. that's too bad because <laughs> I mean she mentioned low sodium. How do you deal? I mean you have people who have all kinds of dietary needs when you're preparing your meals. Do you deal with them individually, like low sodium diets or low fat or whatever? How does that work for you? We deal with uh, we can do we don't do therapeutic meals, but we do do uh, diabetic meals and, right. and meals for people who have allergies we obviously accommodate right. those all of our menus are uh, reviewed by a dietitian we have a volunteer that works with us and she reviews them for one-third of the daily intake or it's RDI I think I'm right. That all right, right. <laughs> and uh, and we don't add extra salt or fat to our meals so just the very minimum that just we can minimum. use um, to keep everything uh, and it still comes out great I, I was surprised the first time I came in I said well there's no salt or there's no butter or, you know how are these <laughs> how are the green beans going to taste but it's delicious they're good they're good and so uh, people really enjoy it you can get a lot of special products you can get unsalted butter can mm -hmm. you not if mm -hmm. you if you're a low sodium mm -hmm. need person and uh, there's salt in everything I've learned what about labels does that mean I, I personally read the labels I have to now given dietary needs etc mm -hmm. and it's shocking to me that sodium is in everything including milk and ice cream <laughs> yeah. and so but I'm an informed consumer and that's the point of listing the label it's not you can't have sodium you need to know so that you're yeah. keeping an account of it exactly. tell me a little more about labeling does that help us with our nutrition from your perspective yeah I mean label reading is a, an important part of shopping um, especially if you're particularly health conscious and I think we all should be <laughs> um, and you're right sodium is added to a lot of foods especially processed foods some of it does occur naturally right um, you'll see you know carbohydrates or sugar in milk, for example, and some people are very surprised that there's sugar in milk, but mm -hmm. it's a naturally occurring Naturally occur. sugar called lactose. Um, so d it's definitely a good practice, um, and I think it can really kind of guide you towards those better choices um, if you're keeping in mind, you know, if you know what you're looking for. So, you know, looking for trans and saturated fat, looking for 
you know, overall calories, if the calories are a good amount for the amount that you would be eating, um, especially in sodium as well. So fiber is a great one to look out for. If it has fiber, it's gonna, right, you know, right. it's gonna be healthier for you. Um, and then foods that are containing vitamins and minerals that are also listed on the label. So yeah. definitely a good practice. What are your biggest challenges in making sure there's good nutrition available to people who eat in the centers or that you send it home? What's your biggest challenge, do you think? <laughs> Our biggest challenge, uh, it's always going to be finding the freshest food uh, okay. and keeping the freshest food. So we were fortunate uh, a couple of years ago now to have some uh, flash freezers put into our facilities so we could take fresh, straight off the farm produce, straight off the farm meat, uh, process it and, and store it. So uh, that inf and forming partnerships to keep our costs down because we are a, right. a nonprofit. Right. We do rely a lot on donations and funding. Um, and for some reason, it's not for some reason, but in general, some of the healthier foods do cost more and some of the local foods do mm -hmm. cost more, mm -hmm. sometimes not always. Not always. Um, but we've been really fortunate with our, our, food, our food bank partnerships and our farmers Wonderful. partnerships. So we get a lot of that in, um, just right, literally right off the farm. Right off the farm. Well, of course, we're getting ready for spring to come and the summer crops. How do you do that in the winter <laughs> for local? I mean, we have potatoes, I guess, and carrots that we've had. Well, during well, this time of year is when yeah, I'm really sitting down tough. with the farmers and they're asking me, what are you going to use okay. for the year? What are your most popular things? So, um, for instance, tomorrow I'll go in to sit down with three or four farmers and tell them what we're going to grow and or what we want them to grow and they'll grow it for us. How wonderful. Um, that is a partnership, isn't it? So then as we're moving through the year, we always receive more than it, feel, it seems like we can serve. So yes. we're freezing that excess. So during okay. the winter months, we always have that local... Um, it's been processed right off the farm still, and it's still from Maine, and it's just been frozen for... Well, that's fabulous. And frozen protects the nutrients too, doesn't it? It's the next best thing. It's the canned goods that get the extra salt most often, isn't it? So the more yeah. processed type things. Yeah. But like I said, there are a variety of companies that are coming out with coming no out. salt added. And no salt added canned... Tomatoes. You can find tomatoes yes. with them. It's difficult to find. I'm going mm -hmm. through the stores looking for that. You can find gluten-free. Is that a that's new a, thing? Oh, that's a, that's a big thing, yeah. That's definitely a big that's thing. That's a big thing for nutrition. A lot nutrition. of people are jumping on that gluten-free bandwagon. Okay. Um, so it's, you know, it's, there's still a lot of research going on about it, I'll, I'll say that. Okay. <laughs> so what would be your biggest tip to some, some individual going to the grocery store? How do I plan best? What should I be thinking about as a senior? Um, I think um, planning meals is a good planning. start. Okay. Plan your meals. Um, especially, you know, a lot of seniors, I think, are on a, a you know, a budget, as, yes. you know, many people are on a of budget, course. not just seniors. Um, so planning your meals, knowing what you're going to buy, and then kind of sticking to that list, um, buying things that are going to be easier, you know, easy for you to prepare, if, especially if you're on your own. Uh, maybe foods that you can, I don't know, uh, freeze and they'll, you know, stay in the freezer and still be good. Um, you know, single portion type of things that you right, can divide right. up and freeze for ac easy access the next time. Um, and then, of course, you know, if you ever need help while you're in the grocery store here in Augusta, I'm in the store. You're there. I'm there. I'm going to be looking for you. Happy to, happy to help, you know. I can guide you to, you know, help with certain choices if you have questions about certain foods or, you know, what would be best. But all right, and there's specials that we should look for, and that's our budget exactly. too. Exactly. Stay tuned. We've got much more information about good nutrition and how to plan for it. Be right back with more of Mature Lifestyle. There's more to local sports than what happens out on the field, court, or ice. Go inside the game. Gain the perspective of coaches, players, and fans. Only on TWC TV's Inside the Game. We go beyond the final score, bringing you inside the huddle, inside the action, inside the game. Only on TWC-TV. Visit TWCTV.net for more information. Spectrum Generations. Live healthy. Live well. Get answers, get connected. Spectrum Generations, specializing in the art of aging. Life should be celebrated. It's a special day when family and friends gather together to celebrate the life of a loved one. A celebration of life helps us honor our loved one and keep our memories alive. 
Whether you're planning a traditional funeral, a creative celebration of life, or a blend of both, at Knowlton Hewins Roberts, we are truly committed to meet the personal and unique needs of you and your family. Knowlton Hewins Roberts. Visit us online or visit our two locations in Augusta and Winthrop. Welcome back to Mature Lifestyles. We're having a lot of fun talking today about good nutrition as your best defense. And we have great coaches here. We have Andre and Chris who really know a lot about this and they make it fun. I think that's the point. Sometimes we think when we have to worry about nutrition, oh, poo, I want to just eat this and that. Well, you can, but we need to think about it because we want to stay healthy. Uh, Andrea, are there certain things that you think about that changes that happen with older people that we might want to think about nutritional needs might change or not? Right. Well, absolutely. I mean, nutrition is you know essential at every stage of life, but of especially as we age, uh, there's a lot of physiological changes that go on. Um, overall, um, we need less calories because our metabolism slows, slows down, but we need... And I can tell you something, that really makes us older people angry because we used to be able to eat all that ice cream and it didn't matter so much, <laughs> but no amount of exercise is going to overcome eating too much, is it? But <laughs> so yeah, moderation becomes moderation. even more important, I think, as we age. Um, so some other physio physiological changes that might occur, um, people might have trouble chewing or swallowing, mm -hmm. um, or they lose their appetite altogether, and just it makes it just not eat. fun to eat. And then there's you know the social changes that come into play, you know maybe they've lost uh, their significant other. So they're other. eating by themselves. Yeah, and you know eating not is fun. a you huge... don't like to cook for one person necessarily. No, exactly, especially when it's not been that way um, for a long time. And then you know there's income changes maybe as we age as well. So there's a lot of different things that you need to take into consideration when you're th talking about nutrition um, in an older population. Um, and not to be negative, but these no, are just no, things that, that it's, occur. It's and acknowledging it exactly. and then how do you deal with it? And that's what exactly. you're there for, to exactly. help advise people. Yeah. Uh, you do that in the store so we can come and look for you. Yeah. But <laughs> as you said, this is a growing trend because mm -hmm. businesses understand the mm -hmm. needs that people have and the changing lives. So I think that's a wonderful service to offer. And you do that through your Meals on Wheels. Mm -hmm. And tell me a little bit more about Meals on Wheels and this, how this works. It's not just the food. Is it? It's not just the food. Uh, as everyone knows, Maine is one of the oldest states in the nation, um, and we have uh, we serve over 800 meals a day. To uh, we deliver twice a week, but we deliver five meals uh, during those periods. We deliver three frozen and two hot meals okay. on the two days. Our volunteers uh, deliver them to the, the the people's home, the consumer's home, yeah. and we do a wellness check while we're there. So we're checking them for people who are, are homebound or not able to leave. Uh, some of them may have mobility issues. Some of them right. may have. Um, you know, any, any number of issues that could keep them from communicating if there's an issue in their home. So our volunteers are trained to report things like abuse and neglect or um, safety hazards in the home. So they're trained fire. to do that. And Absolutely. also I'm sure the person who's getting that meal and that visit must be so important. They trust that person, don't they? And they look forward to the visit. They do, and for some people in some of our more re remote areas, uh, like Northern Somerset County, for right, instance, right. that might be the only, only person they see oh. for you know a couple times a week. So they're lonely, and here comes this person who has is eyes and ears, really, mm -hmm. for their health care and uh, let you know how their meals are going. Are they eating that food you cook? <laughs> <laughs> we do, we do a survey and we, we ask them to tell us, you know, what they think about the food and how they're feeling. And, and you know, the national trend is that people are reporting a better sense of well-being and functional status, I think is the, the correct term there. When they're receiving these these home delivered meals, especially after a, big difference. after a hospital and discharge, and, and it's nice like to hear that that you respond to what they like. We do. That, I mean, new, good nutrition doesn't mean you have to eat food you don't like. <laughs> In fact, the whole idea is to make it even more nutritious and delicious. I like that <laughs> nutritious and delicious, Andrew. That's great. And is there a march? On meal? Tell me about that a little bit. Uh, March is what is known as March for Meals. It's March really for Meals. A time that, that uh, nationally is, is we drive attention to Meals on Wheels to show the benefit that we're uh, that the consumers receive that we're we're giving back to the community and um, locally in Maine and I'm I'm in maybe a national trend I'm sure we do uh, mayors for meals where we have oh, that's great. Uh, leaders from local communities not just mayors. Uh, I understand. But uh, last mm -hmm. year the governor came and and packed Meals on Wheels with us at our Cohen Community Center to bring attention to how important Absolutely. it is. 
and the local news and the media has been really kind to us. They kind of give us a lot of attention. It's so. very popular around the state, isn't it? Not only for the people who receive it, but people like to volunteer. You said you delivered 800 meals. You can't do that without volunteers, <laughs> can you? We can't. We have over 150 drivers that come and we rotate through, so we're not using them all of at course, once. Of course, of course. Um, for some of them, they're retired. That's their, their activity. They the love doing it. way to give it. back. And then for some of them, they may, they may have a parent that's receiving it or they may know someone. So. Uh, it really, uh, it's fun. So everybody wants to be a driver. That seems to be the, the most absolutely, popular thing. Absolutely, absolutely. And that fishing derby we had last month helped to benefit Meals on Wheels. And so Spectrum Generations and all the others are working so hard to make sure these homebound folks get some meals delivered that are nutritious and delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Any other tips you might have for us, Andrea, in terms of making things delicious and nutritious? Making them deli well, um, I think balance, you know, okay. as I said before, nutrition is important at every stage of life, but um, the balance of the meal really comes into play um, as we age as well. So, you know, if, if you're familiar with the My Plate, um, you know, having half your. Why don't you talk about that? So, My Plate, <laughs> um, so kind of did away with the, the pyramid a few years ago, and okay. now we have the My Plate, which you know, it's just exemplifies what the plate should look like. So a half of your plate should be fruits and vegetables, a quarter should be protein and a quarter should be grains. And then of course you have your, your dairy, your al dairy or alternative as well. So that's kind of encompassing all the food groups on a plate. So it's very visual and you can kind of put that directly onto your own plate at any given that meal. helps, doesn't it? To, Instead yeah, of some yeah. pyramid you can't relate to, but you can certainly yeah. relate to a plate. Exactly. And then one of the most important plate. things you were saying, fruits and vegetables mm -hmm. is the majority of that plate, right? Exactly, yeah. Fruits and vegetables, very high in vitamins and minerals that are essential, lower in calories, which is, which is good to maintain a healthy, healthy weight. Right. And if you eat balanced nutritional food, you're not as likely to have too much weight or too little weight. Exactly. Are there supplements that you recommend for people ever? For um, well, there's definitely some vitamins and minerals that we're need in more need of um, as we age, such as iron, um, especially if we're not getting in a lot of protein, um, vitamin B12, uh, things like that. And then there's always the option of doing like a, I, would, I wouldn't, always recommend this but um, if if appetite is low or um, you know preparing meals is difficult those those supplements aren't a bad a bad choice right. you know, just to get you through sure. a bad period exactly. for example exactly I think those are you know, a meal replacement they're not you know great for all the time every day um, but definitely as a you know easy way to get in some nutrition which, or, which is key yeah especially if somebody is on the underweight side as well Okay, and yeah. I wouldn't understand that, so <laughs> I know that people do struggle with that too, both sides. Because you're talking about good nutrition being the best defense, and you've done yes. a great job, and I want to thank you for sharing your knowledge with our viewers, and uh, it makes us want to march for those meals <laughs> and come shopping and shop for the right thing. So thank you for joining us, and don't go away. We're going to go to the movies when you come back. Spectrum Generations. Live healthy, live well. Get answers, get connected. Spectrum Generations, specializing in the art of aging. Excuse me, begging your indulgence, sir? I'm a wealthy foreign dignitary. And I would like your help moving a vast sum of money into this country. I, I would let you keep most of it, but I would like to have some of it back, too. Please take this certified cashier's check as a portion of the transaction. Get lost. Scams like these don't work as well in person. That's why most of them are done online. Welcome back to our show today. We've had a wonderful visit with nutritionists, but now we're going to the movies. It is always amazing to me the kinds of things that Spectrum Generations comes up with to make our life full. And Dave Brown, you are here to tell us about the latest thing that Muskie is doing to make things fun. So Dave Brown, first of all, your title, you are the... I'm, I'm the community liaison for Bridges 
stay-at-home programs. Okay, and it sounds like you're full of creative ideas because you are behind, or at least running, the <laughs> movies at Muskie. Tell me about that. Yeah, well, we were looking for a way to connect multiple generations, yes. um, to, to provide some activity, some social event uh, for the winter, mm -hmm. uh, and, and to show that we really do care about people getting out, people communicating, mm -hmm. and this seemed like such a natural well, that's a great idea, and you've had some movies already. We have. Yeah. We've, we've shown The Way. Uh -huh. uh, all of these movies are mainstream movies, but, but really showed in independent houses, so they may not have gotten okay. the play. The first one was called The Way and stars oh. Martin Sheen, um, and he's doing um, the El Camino de Santiago. It's, it's a pilgrimage in oh, Spain. Okay. Um, it was a good movie. It was an awesome movie. Yes. It was, it, you know, it had a lot of laughing, a few tears, yeah. uh, beautiful yeah. cinematography. Oh, wonderful. And people really enjoyed that. People very, very and much enjoyed what, that. You get to see the movie, but there's more. When, when it, we come to the movies, we get what else with you? Well, this is an event. It is an event, it's, isn't it? It's uh, the third Sunday of the month, and okay. it's in the afternoon, so people can get in and, and have the event and get home, and you come in and we have some wine. We have um, appetizers and hors d'oeuvres, and of course we have popcorn. Okay, good. Um, and, and after the first one, uh, we started serving beer at the request of um, the CEO. <laughs> All right. So it's just like a fun time at the movies when you can kick back, enjoy the movie, but right. you also have a discussion group afterwards. After the movie, what we do is we take a break, and then we come back and we have a facilitated discussion that talks, yeah, we talk about some of the issues presented so it becomes a conversation starter. We're, mm -hmm, we're mm -hmm. very much encouraging, um, you know, moms and sons or moms and daughters or dads and sons to, to come and view these together. Right. Um, it, it, it brings up issues that can be talked about in a safe way and, exactly. and hopefully improves lives. It also helps your brain function a little bit more. You're exactly. enjoying it, but it is a, a good conversation about a film that you've just seen. Right. And you don't always get that chance, do you? You might That's go to the right. movies, but. You want to talk about it. You, you <laughs> listen to people as they leave yeah, the, the yeah. major movie houses and they're mm -hmm. all talking about it. Well, this puts this all in a group. Okay. Um, so it's the third Sunday of the month yep, at, at 3, 3 o'clock. Yep, 3 p.m. Where? At the Muskie Center. The Muskie Center. Yep. So what other movies will well, be coming we've, up? We've shown Unfinished Song. Okay. Um, and, and that was awesome. It was a British movie. Mm -hmm. um, we now have coming up in March, we have Hope Springs, which is about an elderly couple that goes for couples counseling at a resort okay uh, and they, they end up um, looking at parts of their lives that maybe they didn't think they uh, wanted to look at it's challenging but they're handled so professionally that exactly that and then there's it. this chance to uh, talk about it afterwards exactly. with the contemporaries of yours exactly um, and then we have up which is an animated movie about an elderly fellow um, who goes on an adventure and there's a little boy stowaway and, oh. and we, we all know how children are. They always say what comes to mind and there isn't a big filter there. <laughs> and that occurs in this movie Exactly. As well. So did you choose the movies? Um, I chose the movies with Mount St. Joseph's Rehab. Okay. They're one of the sponsors with right. us. How wonderful. Yeah. Uh, how much does it cost? Well, it's $10 for the movie and the snacks and drinks, everything but the wine. What a bargain. And if you bring um, someone with you, it's only $5 for that person. Okay, so two of you can come for $10 if you're Two of you come for 15 Oh, 15 yeah, it's a math 10 plus thing. 5 yeah. I got yeah. it. Oh, I got it. Half price for the second person. Exactly. <laughs> Your exactly. marketing tech. Well, that's great. So it's not yeah. cost prohibitive. For it anybody. really isn't. And, and if you think of it as entertainment. And you want it for all ages so that you can have that intergenerational thing. Exactly. But nobody checks your ID at the door. Nope. Except nope. for the wine. Except for the wine. <laughs> All the proceeds um, from everything go back right. into the Muskie Center. And Dave and I hope that you will join us at the Movies at Muskie. Stay tuned for next year's, next season's event. Mature Lifestyle is made possible by Knowlton Hewins Roberts Funeral Homes and Cremation Service. Our homes are warm and welcoming, and we take care of you and your family like we would our own. Call us anytime. We are here for you.
You're watching TWC TV, only on Time Warner Cable.